Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Teresa Woodruff, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to this 13th annual gathering of the Oncofertility Consortium. This really is a meeting that is a conversation across the intellectual width and the disciplinary depth that represents the entire field of oncofertility. And so I really uh, welcome you into the warmth of this society, even as we are within one of the cold, coldest days of, the, of this particular day in Chicago. There are over 250 people who are registered for this meeting. Uh, we come from about 16 different countries. Uh, and we have over 64 posters that will be represented uh, during the meeting uh, out in our lobby. And that really represents the growth of the field of oncofertility and the outstanding work that each of you are doing to continue to enable the fundamental science, uh, the clinical medicine, the translational work, the patient navigation and allied health professional conversations that are necessary to enable this field to continue to develop. So thank you and welcome to this particular meeting. Uh, I also want to note that uh, there is a app that allows you to uh, have conversations, not just in the traditional sense, but even during this meeting, you can begin to have those networking opportunities. As things come to mind, you can work with your community to say, ah, that's something we need to think about. That's something we might need to consider. So uh, consider that app uh, your friend. It is the first time we are using it. Uh, and it is our effort to, uh, our ongoing effort to be green, but also to continue to uh, develop strategies for conversation. Uh, before I go any further, I want to uh, introduce to all of you and ask them to come and give their initial um, uh, words of welcome our two 2019 conference co chairs, Courtney Finlayson and Olivia Frias. Uh, Courtney and Olivia, would you like to come and say a word to everyone uh, who is here? Good morning, everybody. Um, you know, I first came to this conference when I was uh, an endocrine fellow, and um, that was now quite a long time ago. It doesn't seem like it was, but it was. And it's been exciting to see how this has grown, and it has really given me a ton of opportunities in terms of um, my professional course and research and clinical work. And I hope that I hope that all of you find inspiration here too. Thank you all again for, I'm just absolutely honored to be co-chairing this conference, Teresa, so thank you. And this conference means so much to me. It's honestly one of my most favorite times of the year. I've been coming here for about the past five years now. I felt like I was always typically pregnant for a long time, but I am not this time, so that's exciting. <laughs> um, but with that being said, to meet in a room with people from all over the world, from different disciplines, all coming together with just the complete love and passion for oncofertility and us just wanting to do what's right for these patients is unbelievable. I am so excited to be here. November is definitely my favorite month. I think everybody in my life has asked me, what do we do on this date in November? I'm like, it could be the conference. They're like, that's Thanksgiving. We're probably not going to be at the conference, but I definitely keep November and the end of October just blocked for life because this is one of the most important times of the year for me. So thank you all for being here and we're going to have fun. So I should have turned the slide, so there's that slide. And uh, I also, uh, uh, with uh, Courtney and Olivia, we've developed, uh, and with your input from last year, a tremendous slate of speakers for these uh, two days of this conference, and in fact, for the didactic day that occurred yesterday. Uh, and that includes our keynote speaker, Lisa Campo Engelstein, uh, who will be speaking on bioethics associated with oncofertility. And, we're delighted that uh, she will be uh, delivering this lecture later today. Uh, I mentioned earlier the, the new app. Uh, we are making the move towards uh, better communication among all of us. I hope you've enjoyed that app. Uh, it is also our move to be green. So the uh, brochure that you got this year, we believe will be one of the last. But one of the things that you'll find within the WOVA is a series of surveys that Lauren Adaman will be putting out to get your feedback. And that will allow us to understand what your interests and needs are as it pertains to this particular meeting. So uh, be sure to um, join the conversation and also fill in your feedback uh, on uh, how we uh, organize the meeting 
and it is your feedback that allows us to um, manipulate the various timings of the meetings, to stretch out times for conversations, which is one of the things you all wanted, uh, and to be very responsive to the needs of the community. We also want to thank very much our sponsors. Uh, we have uh, sponsorship from Faring, EMD Serono, Reprotect, and Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, so you will also find on the app uh, places that you can click directly to those services who are uh, uh, great supporters of the Onco Fertility Consortium and uh, of the Onco Fertility field in general. Uh, and some of them have, um, have uh, booths outside in the hallway and I ask you to go and visit with them. In addition, it has been our tradition since the first meeting to have uh, our patient advocates and in fact our patients with us at this particular meeting. And so this year there are a large number of advocates, again, some of whom you will find in the hallway. And during the breaks, we do hope that you will go and visit with the folks who are here, hear their stories. Uh, they have tremendous patient-facing materials that uh, they're very happy to share with every one of you. And they're very good to help with each practice, particularly those that are newly developed, to give some of the patient perspectives that will allow you to uh, develop um, your services in a way that has the patient uh, in mind. Uh, in addition, um, I think one of the uh, ways we've described the consortium uh, has been with three words, with visible, valuable, and viable. We want to make the field of oncofertility visible, and in the very beginning, we had to really articulate the need, uh, the unmet need of the patient, uh, and to create the iconography and the brand and the identity for this field of medicine. We knew it was going to be valuable to the patient, but we had to make it valuable to all of you. We had to ensure that our oncologists and our reproductive endocrinologists, our fundamental scientists, our, our allied health professionals, that all of us uh, under understood that this was an urgent unmet need and that it was valuable for us to come together as a community. And then we had to be viable. We had to create a context and a manner in which we could all come together and gather and create those uh, very valuable um, toolkits uh, to enable this field to develop. And so that's been, those have been our watchwords for the last 13 years. And as we have grown, and in fact we are, uh, we've superseded even this uh, particular space uh, in terms of the number of people who want to be here, we thought that this was a good time to bring all of us together to begin to think about a strategic vision for the next 13 or 15 years. And so today I'm announcing that we will be uh, beginning a consortium strategic planning process, which I call Vision 2030, a roadmap for oncofertility research and practice. And so um, some of you uh, have been in conversation with me about this for a few months, and the plans for this next year are outlined here. And this really is a call to the community, to the community of the willing, to think about how we might begin to imagine this field continuing to grow dynamically. And so our plans are really uh, outlined here. In January, we're going to begin an appreciative inquiry. The appreciative inquiry is going out to all 3,200 members of our Oncofertility Consortium group uh, and from uh, and we are going to be asking all of you for our strengths, opportunities, your aspirations, and how you would measure those uh, aspirations as successful uh, if we were to implement those. So this represents our SOAR. Uh, we hope to be soaring through this process. And so each one of you will be asked to bring together your best ideas and your blue sky thinking for where you hope we could be as a community by 2030. In February, there will be a leadership summit, and we've sent out a note to uh, folks from around the globe uh, to ask for your involvement in a summit uh, in February, to take all the information from that broad community and ask what are the uh, ways that we imagine we could work together uh, towards our future. Um, we will then follow up in March with a number of individual follow-ups. Each of our leaders will have part of the community to go back and start to ideate on some of the uh, issues and topics and opportunities that have come up through the January and February structured meetings. And then in April, we're going to be outlining a mission, a set of vision, a set of values, uh, and we're going to then be sharing that with all of you. 
So there will be ultimately a set of tactics that we'll all have to agree would be the valuable tactic that would allow us to enable these goals uh, towards the outcomes we envision by 2030. And at this meeting next year, we hope to launch that, uh, that communal strategic plan that allows us to all know what we want to, uh, what we want to develop together. This really is, uh, as I said originally, a committee of the willing. So anyone who is interested in participating in this process is fully welcome at the table. It's going to take us a year to get this done because we will have many voices who will be um, talking through the various opportunities. And my hope is that we'll have many ideas, some of which we couldn't even imagine if we simply uh, think together, think independently today. I always say I never come up with good ideas talking to myself. Uh, I like the concept of lab meeting because that's where we actually ideate and come up with the next new brilliant ideas. So that's what we'll be doing over this next year. And at next year's meeting, we will be launching Vision 2023. I believe that this will serve our patients' needs. Uh, our fundamental goal is to enable that next level of, uh, of vision that will allow each of you to continue to serve and expand the opportunities for our patients who need both fertility and endocrine support uh, in not only the cancer setting, but many other settings that you'll be hearing about today. We wanna to be able to do this in a way that communicates our values to uh, the broadest possible community and to develop this through all of our key stakeholders, which really has been a signature of this particular uh, organization. We want to continue to build those innovative tools, many of which are ideated by listening to the talks at these various meetings. Our fundamental scientists then go back to the bench and say, I think that's something that we could uh, imagine developing a solution set for. And as a consequence, that now then comes back into clinical plan, uh, cl clinical process. And then I think the most important part is this latter one, that we are all part of a communal, communal effort, that around the globe we represent different parts of the globe, different patient communities, uh, different organizations, but our fundamental goal is to develop strategies for our patients. So coming together is one of the um, best things that we do. So to be visible, viable, and valuable continues to be our watchwords, and hopefully through this process, uh, all of you will uh, enable that next vision to be uh, constructed. So um, this will be done through the open network. Again, about 3,000, a little bit over 3,000 individuals are a part of that, and we're so excited to have you as uh, part of this ideation. Um, and for uh, next year, we are also announcing uh, the save the date. So um, Olivia, you can tell your family members that there is an actual date, and we try to have this uh, two years in advance. So this will be next year's meeting, November 9th through 11th. I can't promise good weather. Two years ago, we had 70 degrees weather. Today, we have 12 degree weather. So it'll be someplace in between, I suspect. Um, but we hope that you'll all be here, and I'm really delighted that we will be continuing our very successful Fellows Day. Yesterday, we had a, a wonderful uh, day of didactics, um, uh, including uh, our fellows that are across uh, the various professional areas uh, that are developing new networks uh, with uh, referral networks with each other, as well as uh, developing strategies for um, starting oncofertility programs when they move on to their uh, next step. We will have two uh, co-chairs for the meeting, Monica LaRonda and Mohamed Karouf, and we're really delighted that they will be joining uh, in this process of developing uh, the content that will be part of the meeting. Uh, and of course, there will be networking, poster sessions, and the more will be the strategic vision that we'll be launching at next year's meeting. So I'm really delighted once again to have the opportunity to welcome all of you to this uh, 13th annual meeting of the Oncofertility Consortium. I hope you enjoy the meeting, and uh, I look forward to having the conversations in the hallway and elsewhere that continues this uh, dynamic uh, organization forward.